Zdravo guys and welcome to our next installation of our journey through Serbia. Today we are in Niš, the largest city in the southern part of this Balkan nation. We got a lot of stuff to see today. We're gonna meet some locals as well, we're gonna eat some delicious food, and we're gonna learn a little bit of history about this very tumultuous spot in the Balkans. Come along, let's do it. So this place in front of me, you can see is a chapel. Inside is a place called Celecula, also known as the Bone Wall. The Bone Wall, or the Bone Tower, as it can also be called, is one of the most historically savage things that I've heard from this region. This is a very bloody region because of the uprisings and Ottoman thing that they had going on here for 400 years, but this kind of like, this kind of tops the cake. So the story goes that in the early 1800s, there was this big Serbian revolt within the Ottoman-controlled Serbia, which was under Ottoman rule for almost 300 years before that. There was this big push for Serbian nationalism, and a lot of these Serbs, they met in political meetings, they got together, and they decided to retake these cities from the Ottomans to take it back for the Serbian national state. A group of Serbian nationals came to Niš in order to liberate the city from the Ottomans. What ensued was a very violent war where they say something between 3,000 to 4,000 Serbians and up to 10,000 Ottomans died fighting each other here. The leader of this uprising realized that they were definitely not going to win this battle, so in a last-ditch effort to really hurt the Ottomans, he basically fired his musket into a powder keg and exploded uh, just an absolute ton of people. It was a whole room filled with, with, with gunpowder and it just went off like pfft. In this last ditch effort, the Serbians were able to take out a good chunk of the Ottoman army and really, really made the generals that were here stationed in Serbia incredibly angry, as well as the Sultan back in Istanbul. The Sultan ordered the heads to be decapitated from all the fallen Serbian soldiers, their flesh to be removed and their skulls to be basically put into a concrete tower, which you guys are seeing now. They said there was upwards of 900 skulls that were laid on this tower, 58 of those remain today. It was obviously a statement saying, don't rebel against the Ottoman Empire or you're gonna end up with your head in a tower. But um, the Serbians, as well as a lot of the other Balkan national identities, continued to up have uprisings until the fall of the Ottoman Empire in the early 1900s. So here on the side of the sales office, they've actually made these really nice murals. And here is the leader of the Serbian Revolutionary Force. Here is the musket, the powder kegs, and the waiting Ottoman horde that would all perish because of this action. Considering this is a city that also had a concentration camp in the northern part of its city limits during World War II, if you're kind of into that dark tourism thing, I think this actually might be one of the cities for you. So historically speaking, Niš has been home to many, many important changes and kind of was the center of many, many important things here in Europe for literally the last thousand years, it's, it's, it's crazy. So starting back with antiquity a bit, Niš was actually the birthplace of Constantine, who was the first Christian emperor of the Roman Empire. Um, and he's the founder of the city Constantinople, modern day Istanbul. This city was then after the fall of the Roman Empire, part of the Byzantine Empire, part of the, of course, Serbian Empire, which fell and rose against the Ottomans over many times. Um, it was then under the Ottoman Empire for about 250 years until the late 1800s. They got their freedom, Serbia is liberated, uh, and then it became part of the modern day Yugoslav sphere. So you have the, uh, the kind of Austro-Hungarian influence here, the Hungarian influence here, the Serbian influence here. And then um, of course you have the uh, weird Yugoslav times with the socialist communism under Tito. And then now you have the modern Serbian state. So I mean, it's like crazy the amount of stuff that's happened in this city. But I wanna show you the kind of remnants of what was once Yugoslavia. It's amazing. For me, for whatever reason, the communist times in these countries is always so interesting, especially with a background that's so diverse and has so many influences from so many different empires. This housing complex that was built by the Yugoslavs, obviously, is one of the most unreal block housing complexes I think I've ever seen in my life. And I love the, the brutalist style that they have. And parked right beneath this is a Yugo. The Yugo was the traditional, basically, uh, communist car company from the former Yugoslav Republic, or let's say Yugoslav state, 
and you can still find Yugos and Sestavas, that's another one, all over the city today. And look at the amount of concrete they've got going on here. Come on, Tito. For me, what made Serbia super cool is that the architecture here is so varied in such small places. So for example, this is your very typical, like, let's call it imperial kind of building, kind of like early 1900s kind of style. Over here, you have a modern building by all standards. And then over here, right across the street, is you have something from the Yugoslav Soviet times and over here as well from the communist times. So uh, you have three very distinct kinds of architecture. Just like right next to each other. Very cool. So in any great Serbian city, you will find a large fortress because this whole country doesn't have let's say very good defenses. There's not a lot of mountains and it's quite a flat country. So fortresses were incredibly important during the wars that happened here in Serbia. This fortress here in Niš was originally built by the Serbians and then of course taken by the Ottomans and used as defenses for the various invaders that were coming from the north trying to break up the Ottoman Empire. You can see here, this is kind of the, the city center, and then there's uh, the river here, so it's a nice defensive place. And actually on the top of this, um, we can call it Bastion, there's actually Ottoman writing um, in the Arabic script. And you can see here, they have something that looks very similar to a hammam, which you would find in Skopje, in, in Albania. This is the Turks really left an impression on this whole region. And it's really crazy traveling these many various Balkan countries because the Ottomans really took a lot of stuff. And here in Serbia specifically, they were incredibly brutal to the Serbians as they were always trying to take their land back through rebellions. The fortresses here, the now they always turn them into parks. So there's kind of some ancient things. There's this really beautiful little mosque from the 1800s in there. There's now a jazz museum occupying the old hammam. And if we come up here, we should get a prime view of modern day niche. Maybe you can imagine Ottoman warriors firing arrows at Hungarian or Austro-Hungarian invading armies trying to take back this land from the wild Turks. So now the sun's gone down a little bit and we're in the old city center of Niš. It's kind of an interesting mix in what you see in a lot of Balkan countries. You have a guy on a horse, you have some kind of old buildings, some new buildings, and then over here, like what we saw in Bitola in uh, North Macedonia, we can see some buildings kind of from the antiquity or the empire times, uh, all kind of in this very interesting mix of old new, very pretty, very Ottoman, very European, all at the same time. Really interesting place here. So if you really ask me what the difference between here and other Balkan cities is like, I would say Niš is certainly more like what I found in Macedonia than the other cities that I've been to in Serbia. Uh, it seems like there's a lot more historic buildings here 
Um, and Belgrade feels like something else. So if you're looking for something, you know, that has charm, that's a little bit smaller, that has buildings, you know, that are just a little bit more ancient with uh, a little bit less Yugoslav influence, I think Niche is probably a good place to start. And it's cool is they have all these little, really small little houses, little buildings that they still have in the city center here. For me, in a weird way, sometimes I think that these places have a little bit more charm than what you find in the major cities of Western Europe, only because the buildings are a little bit more run down and you can really picture what it probably would have looked like, you know, like 60, 70 years ago versus what it looks like restored. So like, for example, this is a great example. The building's kind of fallen apart, but they still got the, the bones really nice, the nice windows and the, the design. It's interesting. They, um, they, re they restore stuff here, but then other times they just, uh, they just don't. So guys, from the city center here in Niche, I think that's gonna do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little mini tour of this very interesting and very diverse place. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe to the notification bell. That always helps. We've got a Patreon. You guys can look at it right here if you're feeling like it. Um, and we got lots of more content coming from Serbia. We got one more thing tomorrow I'm shooting from Southern Serbia, so take, uh, take note of that. And then next week we are heading to the north going to a music festival and also uh, checking out uh, what it's like on the Hungarian border of Serbia. We got lots to see, so stick along, come along, and uh, stay tuned. Thank you guys. Fala, Jivali.